Welcome back. I've made my decision. I've decided to work on turning the chronograph clock, which currently I have sold ready made, either freestanding or a wall mounting clock, into a kit. It's quite a complicated business producing a kit because you've got to try and work out everything that possibly could go wrong and try and stop it going wrong because if I'm building something in the workshop and something goes wrong I can just make a new one or drill something out but people assembling a kit may well not have the equipment all the plastic bits cut out and now because I finished doing this about two or three weeks ago I'm trying to get back into it so I'm just going to put this together arrange it based on this one to see what parts I need what fittings and what I've forgotten to make so far Originally I was cutting out a lot of these pieces from 10mm acrylic for spacers but it does take a long time and if you watch the previous video sometimes the dimensions vary a little bit probably not enough to worry about with this sort of kit but what I thought I'd do this time is to more heavily rely on these lovely black plastic tubes that are injection moulded so they're all pretty standard so I'm now just working out what size hole I need to cut in a piece of 2mm acrylic so that this will just push in firmly, not too loose, not too tight, just firmly. And the best way to do that is to cut a test hole. Let's do that. Just check it's not going to go anywhere silly. No, stop. And I've started off by cutting a 7mm diameter hole. Now the thing about a laser cutter is very very precise but the holes the laser beam is a quarter of a millimeter diameter so that's in exactly seven mil and it well it's a little bit loose no nope, quite happy with that I'm only going to be using it for spaces and things that need to fit over these tubes so seven is fine this is already exciting I'm improving it as we speak which is really cheering me up and making me very happy here are the original bits to be cut out from 2mm acrylic, that's the spring bit. And it used to have the big hole in the centre, but I'm making it smaller, like I was just saying, for 7mm, a little spacer. And I need washers, spacers, basically made of acrylic, and I worked that one out and I thought, right, it's going to need to be this big roughly. I thought, hold on a minute. My never-ending quest, never-ending journey to try and save as much acrylic as possible so I've made that washer a little bit smaller so I can cut at least two out from this gear that would otherwise be wasted. How exciting and satisfying. The bit that looks like a spring is quite difficult to cut because the lines are so close together that the two millimetre acrylic melts. So these first cuts to separate the bits of spring are done three times at very low power. Let's try that. There we are, and you can see why it's so important. It took a lot of experimenting to cut these shapes out, and let's just cut through. If you do it quicker, because of the small space between them, each of the slots it just melts and distorts and goes all over the place so that's good so here we have it so far and I'm looking at the a better way to improve the mounting of this onto well it's that bit underneath this bit fulfills two purposes at least one of which is to support the pressure pressure cylinder whatever you want to call it that fits in that bit it also has two screws underneath that fit into slots in the base that you can adjust the distance between these two gears to make sure they mesh perfectly and turn freely. It also supports the middle of this. I've tried several things in the past. What I've decided to do this time is to drill out the centre and use a stainless steel rivet but rather than dropping it in in the past I drilled holes in this because obviously the laser cutter can only cut Flat, so it can't drill in a thing perpendicularly. So what I've been doing, I've marked these, got it to cut these triangles wherever I want to drill a hole, and I've been drilling and tapping an M4 hole there, there, and an M4 hole right down the middle. 
getting it all lined up with this gear when it's finished and then dripping some super glue in the oil which then glues the rivet in. Now that's okay if you don't want to adjust it again and you're happy and you've tweaked it. What I'm going to do is to glue that or yes I will glue that on the side and then by this hole that the rivet fits into I tap it to M4 and then that will give you the opportunity to have a nice brass screw another brass screw that you can tighten down that means that you'll be able to adjust the distance of the rivet in and out uh, indefinitely if that's the right word indefinitely as many times as you want um, so that's good I'm going to glue this on something like this just to give it enough of a thread because obviously with this being 10 a 4mm rivet that only leaves 3mm either side and that's not going to be enough to have a proper thread um, with a, a screw that fits tightly without shredding it. That's what I'm doing now. Um, I've just looked up 30mm, these are 25mm and as with everything I seem to need for these projects suddenly there's an absolute absence of 30mm stainless steel M4 rivets. Solid ones. New design at the ready. Changes I've made are to make this ever so slightly smaller so it grips the um, pressure cylinder a little bit better. Make that about a millimetre thicker so it doesn't distort so much. Move the ooles over up or right by a millimetre. Take that hole out the middle and mark. It's going to draw a line and then cut out this bit which you'll stick on there and then that'll be the guide for the um, tapping and drilling. I've forgotten to put a hole in there. Never mind, it's worth testing before I go on. So I'm going to cut it on my pretty piece of cardboard. Because the original honeycomb bed on the machine is really annoying, it's got a raised edge around it, all around the outside, so if your material doesn't actually fit, or is big enough to fit on the edge, it then all sags down in the middle. So I've put my um, Oh, ventilation, air conditioning, mesh stuff on the aluminium. So I've got my card underneath. The reason for using card is that I found with thicker plastic acrylic, like 10mm acrylic, if you have white card underneath, the laser bounces back up a bit and actually puts a radius all around the underneath, which is nice, and also stops the little notches that are caused when the laser hits a part of the supporting mesh and then bounce up, bounces up. I will give that a go. Also what I'm trying this time, which I've tried before, is rather than cutting it through at 1.5mm a second, 40%, which is sort of full power for this machine, I'm going to cut it twice, assuming that it's a thickness of 5mm, so it's going to go faster. Moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Test, just make sure that it's got enough room. Yep, OK, start. So that's the mark it's done. Now it's going to start cutting out the shape, going, I think it's at 3.5 millimetres a second, a 40%, which is what it does, uses for um, 5 millimetre acrylic. Well, I'm pleased with it. It's cut out very nicely. Um, that lines up the engraved bit so I can see well, so I can see where to glue that. Um, my only concern is, which has been a problem on occasion for me putting them together, is that once you've painted this, if you paint them, I've painted them copper, um, sliding them into this scratches paint off very easily. I've rounded off the edge, deep bird edges and all the rest of it and it still can scrape paint off which is frustrating. I think you're nearly there and then you realise you've got to take this to pieces and then repaint it and everything else. That is because of this bit. If I didn't have that coming in this would just be a horseshoe shape and then you could line it up, slot it over and it wouldn't scratch anything off. If it did where it actually held it, it wouldn't matter. Plonk that in there, oops, on there even. There you go, look at that. And the other thing, when you're tapping, you do want to use some, some sort of lubricant or coolant, otherwise with fine taps like this on plastic, it can really um, sh shred the whole lot. I'm not actually focused on anything.
focus there I think I couldn't go right through obviously because I'd forgotten to put the hole in this bit I was just testing to see if the hole I the laser had cut was the right diameter and I'm very happy with that if I get stop it if I get an M4 screw yeah that's nice not too loose perfect so now I will just copy on the drawer and copy that size hole I cut down through into this one I've got this is version 3 obviously I've got that glued on got the hole right through now laser cut I've just drilled these two which I'm going to tap they're 3.3 millimeters to be tapped to M4 I've drilled them all the way through so that as I tap them the swarf has got somewhere to escape from um, oh yes and the other thing is I, I did was to sand the top and the bottom on the sanding machine so I know that they are at right angles should get my fingers in the way line it up with the triangle that I made that's it and then not clamping it down obviously Ooh. as that happens oh such an idiot excuse me well ow, I'll go and get a piece of plot ow Note to self, which I am writing as we go, before you glue this bit on, drill all the holes, the three holes. Then you can clamp it easily in here without this getting in the way. I think that's why I didn't bother clamping it. Oh, stupid. Anyway. Yeah, it's as simple as that. So well, that's nice. We've got the hole on M4 for the rivet, etc. etc. I will now tap these. It's that way, check, it's that way, and that's absolutely fine. That's good, and you saw all the swarf coming out the top. I'll do the other ones. Get back to you. And here we have the finished item. I'm really pleased with that. You can see now that you put the steel rivet in there until it just holds the um, hour dial with one of the card spaces that I provide with all the kits and you can tighten that up and you see a nice brass screw from the outside that holds that in exactly the right position even allowing and I'll supply some with the kit a couple of extra washers underneath to space it so that you can move the whole thing either up or down to allow for all sorts of differences and slight tweakings so that's really pleased with that and then the two screws that are steel because steel is so much cheaper than brass and I'm always trying to keep the cost of these kits down so um, two steel screws that you won't see that go through the slots in the back of the cabinet so that's really nice oh, and the other thing was this fits perfectly now so you can paint that up get it oops hang on a minute get it all looking beautiful and then when it comes time to clamp it down just it'll just slot over and it just sits proud of that by about a quarter to half a millimeter so as you tighten this down like I can't because I put the screws in it holds it in place I'm very pleased with that so that redesigning this one item has addressed several concerns that you know I can overcome here in a workshop but could be potentially ruining for someone trying to assemble this in the privacy of their own home. So progress so far. There we are. We've got version one there, and version two, and version three. And the notes that will help me not to slice my fingers anymore and to put it together in the correct order. Oh and another slight nice thing. Um, if you watched one of the previous videos, you'll know that I ordered a huge 400 milliliter can, aerosol can of special, amazing waterproofing paint that you could spray in a cardboard box and turn it into a bucket. And I ordered it online to fix my mother's shed roof. And what arrived almost a month later was that. And it's a real scam. It was an advert on Facebook, and they advertise these amazing things. They sell the right things for the first few, however many, 100 or whatever, get brilliant reviews and then start providing you with this, which is absolutely useless. I appealed against it or I wanted my money back and they said, oh, we can't give you your money back because there's a coronavirus, so we can only give you half. 
I said, that's absolutely disgusting. How dare you use that as an excuse to rip people off? So I contacted PayPal and PayPal investigated. And for the second time, I have to say, they have um, returned my full money, which is brilliant. The other time they did it was when I'd ordered all those horns from the Spanish company that had um, gone out of business or stopped trading temporarily. That's really good. I'm very impressed with PayPal. It actually come through really well on both situations. Here's a radiator, and here is another test. I've drilled a 4mm hole through this 10mm acrylic and put one of the rivets through. Now what I'm wanting to do is to test it at a higher temperature. This should be going up to 60 degrees or something, I don't know. Um, because obviously the acrylic is going to expand, which means the hole in it is going to get smaller and the stainless steel is going to expand which means it's going to get even tighter so I want to check whether a 4mm hole allows enough so that on a hot day it doesn't all seize up so I'm just waiting for that rivet to heat up now to get on with the next bit which is the pendulum the pendulum which used to look like this this gave me quite a few problems obviously it would have been far easier just to have a really simple bob type pendulum I don't know I wanted one that simulated I know I've talked about this before very briefly simulated a mercury compensated pendulum because it was such an amazing invention prior to something like this or several other varieties in hot weather everything would expand and the pendulum's length would increase and time would slow down in cold weather everything would contract and time would speed up and some bright spark and I might put his name it was a he and I think he was French I'll have a look anyway came up with the idea of having a tube in fact he had two tubes two vials of mercury in the centre of the pendulum such a clever idea mercury being a very heavy metal so in hot weather this bit would exp expand and stretch down but at the same time the mercury would expand and go up and would exactly, if everything was the right size, compensate and keep the overall pendulum mass and length, well length I think, mass, I don't know, exactly the same length and in cold weather this bit would contract and shrink, mercury would shrink, go down the chip, such a clever idea, I couldn't resist doing that. I regretted it on occasion just because of the complexity of making these, so the bits that you need to make one of these pendulums are laser cut, let's move that out of the way, laser cut top and bottom parts which I engraved out with the laser cutter but it really isn't accurate enough so I built a jig which I will then use to drill out these to the correct size for the tube and drill out these for the correct size for the rod. I then need to cut a piece of plastic tube and two rods bit that's interesting is to, to um, represent the mercury. I tried all sorts of things. Initially I even tried masking the outside of this tube, acrylic tube, and dipping it into silver paint. Now, nothing worked. In the end, what I've done it is to cut some of these down, which is this acrylic tube, a pot rod, blah, 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 which is 7mm. Believe you me, the hours I spent trying to find this, it's available, but... Oh, just like 30 millimeter rivets. Um, I cut this into the right length, so round the top off to form a meniscus shape, and then I spray it with metallic silver paint. The problem being that the metallic silver paint takes ages to set, and one touch of that against anything, and you get lines on here and paint wiping off on the tube. Oh, it's such a pain in the backside. Then I remembered how I had done this one. I went for using this. It's for sealing heating and air conditioning ducting. So it's aluminium and it's very shiny, it's lovely. It's a good, really good strong self-adhesive back. It's designed to last forever because obviously it's going to be installed in buildings and it works really well. I don't know why I stopped using it. So what I'm going to do is to suggest to people as part of the kit, I'll give them the bit cut to length, they then sand with the abrasive paper a nice little meniscus shape and then what they do the length of this is they wrap it round get it all nice and tight leave a little bit extra at the top and I'll do some experiments to remind me how many 
how many millimeters. Then what I found was, once you've got a little sort of crown of it sticking above, if you roll it on a bench or a hard surface and just slowly go over and over, it actually rounds itself off and you would never know. I mean, if you look at this one, let's just zoom in. You can see there's a little bit of mottling, but if you see real mercury and it's been around for a while, you get impurities that float on the surface anyway. You would really never know that that wasn't proper mercury. It's got all the shines, it's got a little bit of mottling, which looks really like the real thing. Fantastic. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm much happier with that because also it means that people building the kit don't have to buy another load of spray paint. I will provide them with some of this lovely shiny stuff. Shiny, shiny. What I'm going to do now is to cut out the metal rods and the bits of tube and drill out these on the jig. Or perhaps not. The blade just sprung off the band, so I thought, oh no, that's how it's broken because I haven't got any spares. But what's happened is the tyre on the drive pulley here has come off. I can't imagine it's broken, perhaps it was glued on. I will investigate. You have the drive pulley at the bottom, you have the tensioning pulley at the top, and the blade goes right round. It's endless, it just goes right round and back up again. Round and round and round. Very clever. Instructions, what instructions? thing is you just start undoing things that look quite helpful. I undid the one in the middle, the bolt, and the pulley came off. It's got a key that holds it um, from spinning. So that's great. What I'm doing now is looking around the outside of this, trying to find whether there is the line that signifies or indicates that tyre was joined. I can't. This is an interesting little point. Fascinating physics or science. Um, if you have a slight convex slope in the middle of a pulley, any um, drive belt going around it will stay in the centre. Because as it goes off to one side, it speeds up because the circumference is getting smaller and pushes it back into the middle. It's such an amazing effect. You wouldn't have thought it would work. I assume these outside bits are just to keep this tyre in place. It's amazing. You look at old, ancient, really old steam engines, farm machinery. They never had edges on pulleys simply for that reason. They would all have a slight curve. Another good example is the sanding machine. This belt isn't held on by anything except the slight radius in this top pulley. And you can even steer it from left and right by angling this top pulley with an adjuster. So, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. It will stretch together, but I don't know. Well, this has been full on the radiator for some time. Half an hour or something, so it's got to have heated up and it still rotates perfectly. Right, take the dog for all, had a thought. What I'm going to do now is to put this in the freezer. Obviously the original one won't fit because it's stretched and it's snapped and there's no way I can glue two ends together so I can make a new one out of this old um, bicycle inner tube right now. This has worked out very well. Oh, by the way, you can get replacements. Lots of them available until you look them up and you find that America has got a plethora of spares, but not in this country. In fact, there was something about the Rexall um, spares shop closing in October, which is a shame. Never mind, I have cut a strip of this rubber which was actually very easy to cut. I've cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol and I've cut it almost to the right size. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to probably put a bit of tape there just to hold it, or a very small little dab of super glue to hold that as a start. Mm -hmm. Wrap it around. This is long enough to go around, well, twice in a little bit. There we go two layers right the way around and then it wasn't quite long enough actually so I had to join, there's a join there which I've cut at an angle and then it goes round and there's the final join there which I've separated and it seems not to jump up too much again as always I don't know what I'm doing I'll get this put back on the bandsaw and give it a go right I've got it all back together let's find a bit of wood to cut up 
switch the thing on. Quite exciting. I don't know how long it's going to last. You never know. Right, I'll go ahead and finish making the, making the bit for the pendulum. Oh, funny enough, I've just remembered when I replaced my wife's um, inner tube on her bike after having had a puncture, and I said, oh, I think I'll hang on to that. She said, what on earth would an old inner tube, how could that ever be of any practical use? And I thought, hmm, nice sort of rubber, good quality rubber. Sure enough, I've been proved right. Chalk it up. A reasonably priced source of a very straight copper rods, you ask? Well, um, welding rods. They're mod steel in the middle and they're protected from corrosion by being um, plated with copper. So they're perfect. And they're very reasonably priced because they're such common things. So these are hacksaw to cut these up. And they need to be 50 millimetres long. No, 65 millimetres. Cramped isn't the word for this part of the workshop. It's ridiculous. There's a lathe and there's the vice. And there are the lovely magnetic rubber-faced vice protectors. Well, they don't protect the vice, but they protect whatever you're putting in it if it's soft. So let's get them sawed up. Ta-da! Right, I've got most of the bits made up. Now, as I say, I need to um, drill out these two to 3.3mm holes because the um, welding rod is one uh, 3.1, I think, millimetres, and the middle to 12. How am I going to do that without getting more injuries? Well, I believe another jig is the answer. This is one of my favourites. Basically, it allows you to slot this, which is very tricky to hold, in there, twist this round, tighten it down, and Bob's your uncle. Now, we take it out. You can see there's all the drilled out middle bit for the 12mm tube and there's a hole here that then when you've got everything else well painted, assembled just right, all nice and straight, you can drip a bit of super glue in there, it'll run round inside and it sticks like something to the proverbial shovel. And there we have it, completed one and this fits together beautifully. The mercury tube simulates mercury as fits perfectly in the hole that the laser cut in the bottom. There's a bit to glue on the bottom and that's what you glue the mercury tube to and then the top assembly with a small hook on the top that hooks into the pendulum support on the clock movement. Fantastic. Now I'm going to go and get the um, test rivet out of the freezer. I'm very pleased with that. It's still got the same lateral movement. So it looks like acrylic expands and contracts by the, contracts by the same amount as stainless steel. That, I'm very pleased with that. You can put a washer on there or something. Let's try and get this in. Well, right, very happy with that. If you look at that now, this lines up to the hour dial. But it doesn't line up this way. Now what I can do, tighten them up, watch everything else fall off that I've positioned carefully. And there you have it, look at that. Oh, I can't tell you how thrilled I am. The, um, the engravings, by the way, that glues on either all round or I think, in fact, I'm lucky more things didn't fall out actually. With two small copper rivets, just, just a combination of copper, brass, wood, and all the rest just makes it look so nice. So pleased, I can't tell you. So basically, this is all now ready for the next step. 
so exciting. The next step being how to assemble all this. I know now I've got all, oh I haven't done the copper pipe but I'll do that on another day. I think it's time I feel another video coming on so thank you very much for watching. Remember that these kits hopefully, well I'll keep you posted as to progress, but that there are 20 new, well 17 now, Nemnet Throbwell Kitchen Timer kits available and the two climatic revelators. So very exciting. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Oh, do click on subscribe and the bell and things that I keep hearing other YouTube people say. That would be great. Thanks very much.